Welcome back to Design Smith. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a design like this using Adobe Illustrator and then finishing the effects in Photoshop. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so I talked about this poster in last week's Weekly Favorites, and it's such a really cool composition here. And what we're gonna do is start everything in Illustrator and then finish up the effects in Photoshop. And I'll also show you how you can utilize vector smart objects to update the artwork after you've applied the effects. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the rectangle tool and I'm going to recreate this rectangle right here. Just temporarily, I'm gonna change this over to yellow so that it's easier to actually see what we're doing. And I'm gonna grab my direct select tool and just choose both of these anchor points right here so that we can expand this out. And this is kind of a pro tip, instead of rotating like this and then placing it directly, what we're gonna do is select the rectangle and then hit R on our keyboard and we're gonna hold down Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, and we're gonna bring the crosshairs right here, and it's gonna to snap to that anchor point. And now we can rotate this rectangle exactly where it needs to be and hit OK. Okay, obviously this shape isn't perfectly matching, so let's grab our Direct Select tool and grab those anchor points, and then we'll do the same thing with these two. And it's close enough, we don't have to get it exact. All right, let's grab the rectangle tool again and let's create a perfect square. I'm gonna hold down shift while doing this. And it's not quite a perfect square. We'll just kind of go right into here where this is. And now I'm gonna hit L on my keyboard and that's gonna bring up our ellipse tool. So let's grab a circle right here. And then we'll do the same thing for right here. I'm just gonna use the rotation tool down here to get this exactly. And it looks like it's also 14 degrees. So we'll just go with that direct select tool again. Let's bring those right here and then we'll grab these two and bring it up to about right there. And now we'll create our last two circles right here in this area. And this one is a little bit smaller, so let's scale it down to here. Okay, for the most part, everything is pretty close in terms of how these shapes are gonna work with each other. So what we're gonna do is select all of the shapes here and go over to the Pathfinder tool, click on Unite. And as you can see, that's gonna take all of these different shapes right here and combine them together, making it to where the paths are actually overlapping each other. Now I'm gonna hit copy, and we're gonna go over here into Photoshop, and I'm gonna paste as a smart object. And we'll hit okay to get that placed. All right, so before we do any of the blurring, I'm actually gonna lay down a couple of things as a foundation real quick. So in our original poster, I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, and we're gonna grab this background color right here. Let's go back into Photoshop. I'm gonna make sure that I have my background layer selected so that we add a solid color layer on top of that background. And now I'm just gonna paste that hex value in there. And this would be a good time to change the color. So let's go ahead and double click in this layer. I'm gonna click on color overlay. And let's choose red right up here. You can always go back and change this color later if you want. And let's double click and name this layer. I'm gonna name this shapes. I'm gonna collapse the effects right here. I'm gonna hit Command J or Control J, and that's gonna duplicate our layer. And we can leave this name as Shapes Copy, but because of my OCD, I've got to capitalize that C. And now I'm gonna add a new layer, and we're gonna call this Grain. And I'm gonna hit Shift Delete to bring up my Fill panel right here. And we're gonna fill this with 50% gray and hit OK. And now we're gonna go up here to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And for the grain, I'm gonna crank this all the way up to 100, and Roughness to 100, and Size to 100. I'm gonna hit okay. And just temporarily, we're gonna hide this grain layer. And I'm also gonna hide these shapes layers really quickly because we need to drag a guide right down here. And so from right up here at the top, let's drag a guideline down and it should snap right in the middle of your document. If it doesn't snap, make sure that you have snap turned on. Go up here to view and snap right here. <laughs> All right, now we can bring both of these layers back and I'm gonna select the top one and we're gonna hit M on our keyboard and let's bring up a marquee selection right up here to the middle point of our document. And now let's go up here to Filter, Blur, and Box Blur. So you can use a Gaussian Blur, but I really like Box Blur because of the spread that it offers. And 250 looks pretty good, however, if you want a little bit more spread, you can bring it up to 500. And now we'll hit OK. And let's go ahead and hide the guide. I'm gonna hit Command Semicolon, or Control Semicolon if you're on Windows. And you can see that dividing line right here across the middle where you have the blur on the bottom, but not on the top. And now we're gonna go up here to our grain layer. Let's bring it back and let's zoom in really quickly. And I would say the closest blending mode is gonna be either overlay or soft light in order to achieve that original effect. If you go in here and look at the original poster, you don't really see too much of that grain effect happening in the top area. You see it mostly in the bottom area. 
So basically between those two blending modes, if you want it to be lighter, then go with soft light. If you want it to be a little bit more intense, go with overlay. I think I'm gonna keep mine to soft light. All right, so like I said earlier, if you wanna go in here and change the colors again, you can do that and there's two different ways to do it. The first one is to double click on each one of these layers and go in here to color overlay and then change it to a different color. However, if we change this to blue, you'll notice that there's still red and the reason why is because the bottom layer is still red. So we would have to go in and change both of those colors in order to get both of them to be blue. However, because we pasted this in here as a smart object, and because we duplicated the original smart object, one is a copy of the other. So if we double click on the thumbnail, it'll actually take us back into Illustrator, and we can go over here and change the color if we want to. Let's change it to something like a mint type of green. Hit OK, and now we'll hit Save. And let's go back into Photoshop and you'll notice in the thumbnails that those colors are both updated, but they're still blue because we have a color overlay. If you have a color overlay in Photoshop, it's going to override whatever color you have in Illustrator. So let's uncheck color overlay on here and we'll do the same thing right here. So now if we double click on this and go back in and we can change this to red, hit OK, and hit save. If this ever comes up, just hit yes and go back into Photoshop, and now both layers are red. And not only can you go back in and change the color, you can also change the overall design. So let's get rid of this, and now let's put down a new design right here. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. This is really just gonna be to show you how quickly you can do this. I'll just create a little square right there, and we'll just rotate that. And let's add in something like a triangle on the bottom. All right, let's make sure they're all kind of touching each other. And now we'll hit save, and let's go back into Photoshop and you'll notice that everything right here is updated. It even updated both of those layers because like I said earlier, one is a duplicate of the other, so it applies to both of them. All right, so I'm gonna revert back to our original shapes that we had in here. I'm gonna hit save and we'll go back in here and those are updated now. And now we're gonna go in here and recreate the text. So this is you are greater than the sum of your parts. And I'm not sure what font that is, but we are going to use inter and let's scale this down right here. And it looks like this is aligned right. So let's do that. I'm going to get this as close as possible, but we're not going to worry about getting it exactly the same. Okay. That actually worked out pretty well. All right, so like I said in last week's video, what's really cool about this poster and how it works with the type right here is how the type actually goes behind these shapes right here. And that's actually pretty easy to achieve. What we're gonna do is select both of these larger sections right here. We're gonna hit copy and let's go in here to Photoshop. I'm gonna go right here to my color fill layer and then hit paste and paste as a smart object. So now as you can see, those are actually behind those shapes right there. But what we need to do is bring it up one layer right here so that it's kind of sandwiched in between those two shape layers. And then what I'm going to do is go to our top shapes layer and just lower down the opacity to 90%. And as you can see, we can now clearly read all of the type that's right there in this top area and in the bottom area. And then since the smaller bodies of type are largely unaffected by the red, we'll just paste those as the same layer right here in this area. And then just to be completely safe, I'm going to bring this down below both of our shape layers. All right, and that's how you create a poster like this using Illustrator and Photoshop. We started off creating our vector smart objects in Illustrator, pasted them into Photoshop, applied our effects, and then finished up with our type, making sure that you could see the type in between the layers of shapes themselves. I hope this video was valuable to you. If it was, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.